right, I'm just watching some YouTube videos to get my day started. We'll finish doing, we'll finish organizing and shoot the haul. And I last minute decided to do Silver Lake Flea on Sunday. After I go through the jacket collection, basically, I'm gonna organize all the jackets and then I sort through and see what I'm gonna bring to Silver Lake. I'm trying to do like a winter clear out just cause in LA, you really don't have a need to keep jackets around. I really wanna get rid of as many jackets as I can this weekend so I can start moving into like spring and like Coachella mode, the shop. So that's kind of like a little bit of what's going on the next couple of days so it's about to get busy but yeah i'm just gonna watch some youtube for a little bit and then we'll do the haul Honestly, i haven't been into a thrift store for like over a month now so i'm dying to get my head on some musty nasty clothes like i don't know where to start with this because i'm just like what cat is in the window today mr sky yep this is mr sky this is a uh, shop bummies little baby all right we're in full-on flea market prep mode brought a rack up so this is how i'll kind of like separate everything out yep i'm about to roll this into my room so we could start going through all the jackets different types but yeah I'll just kind of like go in a row I don't know if you can see Charlie but he literally can't decide if he wants to stay in or go out let's all just get started um a lot of this is stuff that is like on my depop shop and also on Shopify um I'm getting ready for a flea market on Sunday today's Friday so yeah I'm kind of like starting to prepare for that I can kind of like show you organized between like my personals, like stuff for Depop, stuff for flea market, talk about that strategy. But yeah, I just wanted to show some of these pieces. Finally get to this part of the video. <laughs> we'll just go off top. I think I want to show the most interesting pieces first and we'll just go as we go. Here's the first one. It's this really cool insane leather jacket it just has like a mark on the front it has this big chevrolet racing embroidery on the back i either got it at a flea market or a vintage warehouse that's generally where i get a lot of my outerwear at i don't know why i've been holding on this for too long but i think this is one that i will bring to silver lake tomorrow if i can sell it i sell it if i don't i don't when it comes to flea markets i just like to show people things if I'm not going to get the price that I want for it, like I don't mind holding on to it, but sometimes I just like to show people, like it is a really dope piece. Here's the next one. This is a personal, this is a personal leather jacket. The one thing is, which I realized after I took it home was it was broken, but then it's like on this side. So I need to figure out how to fix the snap button on this. I think I got this out of vintage warehouse. I'll be doing a future video on like sourcing at a vintage warehouse. So if you guys have any specific questions on that, make sure to comment down below. And I'm planning on working on it in like a couple of weeks. Here's this leather jacket. I just need to fix the little snap button right here. This is literally why I'm excited for Coachella to come back so I could wear this jacket. All right, I guess I'll kind of sort them on that rack for now. This one, I think I literally just got this one at the bins one day. You can see someone repaired the back here because it looked like it was falling apart. I'm pretty sure it's 90s. Just a classic denim Levi's jacket. Basically, you know it's vintage. It has like this paper tag. It, everything's kind of like in this font. Like I feel like font is like a really big thing to pay attention to when it, and this is something I need to do more research on, but definitely like Google on the internet, but like the serial number. I know it tells you like the style and the date and stuff like that. So I'm just keeping it as a blank because I'm planning on doing a lot of upcycling projects. I want to do something fun for Coachella with this one. So yeah, I'm putting all the things I'm keeping on this end of the rack. And then the ones I'm going to sell, I'm going to keep to the front because this is all the stuff I need to organize too. It'll slowly start to get organized. All right, next one. Here's an Escada blazer. Honestly, I just really liked it because of like the metallic look to it. I'm a little bit too small. I'm like an extra small. So somebody who is like a true small, this would probably fit you really well. I just like how it shines. But yeah, she is gonna go to 
the Silver Lake. And then here's another piece I'm gonna be sending to Silver Lake, like this blue knit. I love like the gray fuzzy collar. I just feel like everybody's into like the faux fur collars at the moment right now. She's cute. She's gonna be going to Silver Lake as well. And then these two, cause I'm pretty sure I showed these in the last video. So yeah, here's like the juicy terry claw. I think I found this at the bins, at the Escondido bins that was featured in the first video. These two I picked up at the bins out there. It's cool because they theirs is different. They have like a bunch of bins out and basically it's like if you get 15 items it's $22 or something which the one I'm used to going to on like or like in LA if you're familiar with like East LA. Yeah they do it by the pound which I honestly prefer, I don't know why, but like at the same time, I guess it is kind of cool that they do like 15 for $22 because then if you got like 15 jackets, then it'd probably be cheaper than if you bought it by the pound, if that makes sense. These are just things I think about because it's like you want to obviously be creative with how you source. Obviously a lot of people go to the bins, go thrifting, blah, blah, blah. Like I try to do a mixture of like high end sourcing and then lower end sourcing to kind of balance everything out. Cause sometimes it's hard going to the bins every single day. I don't know, like it's not every day you're gonna go to the bins and you're gonna find a fringe leather jacket or you're gonna find leather like NASCAR jacket. That's why I do like a mixture, bins, thrifting, flea markets. That's definitely like, stuff I'm trying to share on this like YouTube journey that I'm starting. Okay, so this one is really cool. Made in Japan, but it's just like all the detailing on it is so crazy. It's like this really high quality knit that zips. Pretty sure this is gonna go to Silver Lake. I have another one that's kind of similar, like this St. John Sport. I just really liked the print on it. Little 90s zip up sweater. This one was featured in my Instagram. I have a couple of these, but this one is for sale. It's like a denim Looney Tunes jacket. I like the green like corduroy collar on it. I think that's really nice. Lined with flannel, so it's extra warm, which is also nice. It's not just a denim jacket, but it has the corduroy on it. Or if there's a flannel lining all about like details when i'm sourcing so that's kind of what like makes me gravitate towards things and then i started out as a t-shirt collector for the most part it was mostly all about like looney tunes stuff so that's why i guess this jacket is like important to me in the shop because i'm trying to expand out of like my t-shirt looney tunes phase i feel like that's kind of what 2021 was all about was me kind of like expanding um, the y2k trend got really hot and so i started sourcing a lot more denim a lot more bottoms got into flare jeans because that was something that was very nostalgic to me growing up i'm sure i'm like 5'2 when i was little i wanted to wear flare jeans because they made me look so long and tall yeah i don't know went on a little tangent with that one but yeah here's a close-up the denim and the embroidery patch. Let's see, do I have the other one right here? And then I literally have this one, which is a size medium. I think this one I'm keeping as a personal just cause it's plain and it's a medium and this one fits me better. Yeah, and then this one is an extra small. I like this one cause it has like the hood on it. For me, I love green, I love embroidery. I love when there's more than one character embroidered on the back. Yeah, I have those. I'm pretty sure I had one more though. So let me check. Oh yeah, I found, okay, I found one more. And then I realized I have a whole little, another section in my closet of jackets that I forgot to show. So yeah, this one is basically the same thing as the one I have on. It just has like a khaki. And Honestly, I just live in SoCal, so I just feel like this one is more wearable because it's lighter. Bringing the green one out to Silver Lake. I've been doing thrifting since high school. That's probably been like at least 15 years, at least 15 years of thrifting. Um, and then when I was in high school or college, I worked at the Sacramento Antique Fair. And I feel like that's how I started getting really into vintage, like beyond just like thrifting. Um, 
Because I felt like when I was a kid, you know, it was about being like, I was in my like Tumblr phase. I want to thrift and be like a hipster and wear like chunky cardigans and a beanie. Like the old Dooney and Burke stuff, not like the 90s Y2K colorful stuff, like the leather stuff. If you know, you know, like the more like neutral style like ones, not the basically. I've been doing this for a long time, I guess like 15 years, and then I started actually making this a business. I guess I'm in technically, I'm starting my year three. 2019 was when I kind of like officially like made it an LLC, like quit my job, did everything, and I can kind of go into all that in another video. I feel like when you've done things for so long, there are certain things where you just kind of like have to hold on to. Well, like these are worth something and like it took me so long to find it that I don't want to just sell it right away. I want to show this piece because I really don't know what this is, but it was just so cool that I had to get it and I knew it was going to fit me. We took some Instagram pictures in this in the last video, but unfortunately the film was expired. So I don't have a ton of photos to show you of this fit. So I think I'm going to reshoot it. So maybe I'll think of another way to style this. So if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. But I just love the denim detailing. I love how well it fits me. I'm into it. I've been seeing people talking about like trench coats, like probably trending for the next year. So I feel like this will be my take on the 2020s, what I'll wear as a trench coat. This one is another one that is staying. So you'll go there. This one I'm actually so excited on. Like I finally have my own Carhartt made in the USA in a colorway that I like. It's an adult small, but it fits. Basically I'm saying they're big because usually I size up and this is like the one brand where I'm like, oh, this is the small is actually how I want it to fit. Just cause you know, it's a work work jacket. So of course everything is gonna be oversized. I just really love the color, the fade. I like the contrast collar. Like it has everything, everything that I like. It's classic, but it still has something that makes it like special. I know there's like a ton of people that sell Carhartt out there, but yeah, it's like you just want like paper tags that's so like made in the USA. Checking tags and like the quality, like feeling it. And honestly, it just takes time. It took me a long time to get this good at like knowing vintage and like I'm still learning. I would say I'm great between like 80s 80s to present but like now I'm trying to get better at the 70s and the 60s I'm just kind of making an effort to kind of like educate myself on different eras whenever I go to stores I'm always looking at things like hardware details the tags um, learning about construction um, learning how clothes used to be made um, I just feel like learning about all of those things will help you be like a better vintage um, reseller Let's go into some of like the heavier stuff. So this coat is something that I still haven't decided what I want to do with. It's like this brown Givenchy fur jacket. It's honestly the softest thing I've ever touched. She's wonderful. She's gorgeous. She's so soft and she's such a great brown. So I don't know. Let me know if you think I should keep this one or not. Uh, here's like the tag. Just, all right, I just convinced myself that she is staying. Here's another one. I don't know if I'm gonna bring this to Silver Lake because I just feel like we live in SoCal, and so bringing stuff like this to like local markets, I feel like it's just tough. I mean, sometimes people are traveling when they're like at Silver Lake. Sometimes, like I have sold some big jackets, but. I feel like this is a risk, especially because we're like at the end of the season. So I think I might just put her on Etsy and just see what happens. She just belongs with someone else. But yeah, it's labeled size mediums. The, like the only tag says like made in Hong Kong. That's that one. I have two trench coats. This is the one I think I'm gonna keep just cause I like the faux fur and that it has a hood. And then this one is more so this one I think is gonna go to sell and then let's actually try this one on see my thing is is like when sleeves fit me like that's perfect because I'm like so tiny I'm like the size of a teenage boy like I'll just keep this for when I start traveling more again and going up to the east coast and like the pacific northwest and stuff but yeah I just love the like faux fur 
And I love that it has a hood, you know? So yeah, there's that one. Okay, some of these I think I might just start rapid firing now. I found this guy at the bins. It, it felt like somebody tried repatch it. I think that's why it was in the bins because it had all like the glue stuck to it still. But basically what I did was I soaked it and then I just took it all off and like, I don't know, it looks fine to me. Like there's nothing wrong with it now. It's this great like light wash denim. Whenever I see like a hard rock thing and it says save the planet, I always pick them up just because like sustainability, saving the planet, that stuff we like to promote. Here's another one I got at the bins, like this large like corduroy Sherpa jacket. It's by the brand Pineapple Connection. But yeah, it's like this cute blue corduroy Sherpa jacket that's like warm. I'll probably sell this at like I don't know, like 25 bucks at the flea market. Okay, here's one that I think is really cool. It's like this Mickey Mouse racing jacket. Hung on the hanger. The way the arms sit, it like makes his face. Cute little Mickey Mouse racing jacket. Winter wear takes up so much room, so that's why I like really want to do this market. Let's just try to clear everything out. Jackets also cost so much more to ship, so I feel like doing a market to kind of get rid of your winter wear is like a great way to go, especially if you're living in a colder place. I feel like you still have the month of February to kind of get rid of your winter wear stuff. So after this one, I want to do like hoodies and sweatshirts, maybe vests, I don't know. Comment below if that sounds interesting to you. Here, I'm gonna rapid fire some windbreakers that I have. A 90s Reebok, um, it has like the front embroidered and the back hit. And then what I love about like 90s stuff is like all like the hardware has branding on it. Also have these two like surf style jackets. When I first moved out to LA, I just remember being like, oh my God, these look so cool and so retro. And they always have purple and green colors with like this bright neon font. And then yeah, just some 90s windbreakers. Here's like an Umbro like soccer one, and then Reebok, Greg, Norman collection. I just remember this shark growing up because like, I don't know if anyone's else parents like played a lot of golf like my grandparents did, especially like in the 90s. I oh yeah, there's that guy. But yeah, here's two. I really like the suede leather and how there's always like that crochet detailing to kind of like bring it all together. And this one has little like flowers on it. I feel like these could be really cool style to wear to Coachella. And then this one I like cause it's like black and then it has like rainbow colored crochet stitching. Both of these button up. I feel like I'm holding on to the black one, but the blue one I'm gonna be selling at Silverwood this weekend. Let's go into this one. In my first vlog, I quickly showed me going to like flashbacks in a bunch of stores in San Diego. Um, basically what I do down there every once in a while, I don't necessarily go every month, but I will go drive down to Carlsbad and um, sell some of my old inventory down there. Like a piece I traded up for because I was just like, wow, that's amazing. I don't think I'll ever find something like that again. It's like this leather bomber jacket. It's a little bit big, but I don't mind because when it's cold, I can layer it over stuff. It's like a map of the whole world. And then it's not just like that, but it's in like different brown animal print color patching has everything embroidered on it she was 150 dollars but i'm also just like yeah that's probably what i would charge for it too in my shop because you're literally never gonna find anything like this considering considering all this detailing i like don't mind that price this is something that like I feel like both my sister and I have started been getting into is like varsity style jacket. The snap buttons, I love things with like the embroidery on the front. But I don't know. I got this at Torgom. They have like surplus sales every once in a while. So I picked up from one of their surplus sales just because I love the coloring. I need those light summer jackets. I'm like honestly waiting for denim jackets to come back. There's like a Levi's sport jean size large. I feel like maybe it's cause it's sport that it's like more fitted. I could like see this being on like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air or something, you know? So I also like the hood. I like 
the color palette of it all, like the earth tone dark color palette. Like I feel very retro, like late 80s, 90s. I think it's like a perfect like Southern California jacket because it's lightweight, it's baggy, so I could like layer on top of things. And like the back patch. I feel like I got this one at Torgon as well. Yeah, I get a lot of cool outerwear from there. And I do have a bunch of stuff that, you know, like I have like the simple corduroy jacket and like I have like a black blazer. Like I still, even though I have standout style pieces, like I also try to carry like closet staples as well. Here's another one. I think I got this one at the last Rose Bowl. Mainly just liked. It's cool because it's something different it looks very 90s i like contrast collar and then you can button it right there i like the faded black it has like a nice boxy fit to it too okay so it's by gasoline jeans i also just really like the tag on here i'm working on being more consistent about posting model shots onto my website in depop it's like i'm just posting everything like as flat lace for now and then adding the measurements to, because like i know i'm like a very small person and that like me modeling stuff doesn't always get the best representation on like my website and depop so that's just something i feel like i've been wanting to talk about for a really long time and didn't really know how to um like with instagram and everything so i feel like youtube can kind of be a great place for me to have a dialogue with i guess like my following and i guess new people um on there what they would like to see because I feel like being a small business is really hard to show representation sometimes because it's not like I have all the money to just be like okay like let's book like a model of like every size and I can pay them and I can pay I'm just trying to get to a place where people understand that like I'm just one person and it's like every day I'm trying to make one small thing better you know, I'm just trying to get perspective that basically like I do everything. I do, I shoot all my product shots, I upload everything, I go to the post office, I do all the social media. I work with my sister to do all the photos, organizing all my like wholesale appointments, meet, like maintaining all my relationships with people. But yeah, I mean, I can go into a whole tangent on that and that's something I can dive deeper into in another video. The first couple of vlogs, I'm gonna just try to sprinkle as much of like my inner monologues and thoughts. So whatever people respond to is stuff that I kind of want to push more. So yeah, whenever something sparks you, like I genuinely want to know what people want to hear more about, what we can have a dialogue about, things like that. Back to the jacket haul. Honestly, maybe I'll just do a couple more pieces that I'm planning on bringing to Silver Lake. And then we'll cut it because I feel like this might get really long. Some Kooji puffer jacket. It has like this little back pocket. Um, it has some like discoloration. I'm just going to sell it cheaply at Silver Lake. I picked it up for a styling collaboration I did with Depop. Now, now that it didn't sell and that collaboration's over, I'm like, okay, I'll just try to get rid of it at the flea market. Or I can give it to one of Aaron's friends. Yeah. I think I got this at... Torgon, Torgon wholesale. Little Nike ACG moment. I had a North Face one and then I found the Nike ACG one and I don't know, I'm such a Nike girl that like, I need to have. That's a personal one I wore in, I don't know if you follow us on Instagram, you've seen this on my Instagram. Shop Bummy took some fire photos in this. These are 1960s army thermal liners. Um, I got it from a guy like, tie-dyed tie-dyed this one and they also added pockets to it so like they don't come with pockets usually this is something that you snap to the inside and then this would go on the inside of the jacket yeah that's why i think these are really cool i got a couple of them nylon versions of it this one is how it comes and so these are also on my website and then these two, the overdyed version of the one I just showed you. Based on this one, the pocket is like a contrast. And then this one, a more of like a teal green, I guess. And I just like that they have a zipper because some of like the other ones, like this one, don't have 
a zipper. These are like more of the common ones that you see. Um, I'm pretty sure this one's like 80s or 90s versus like these guys that are like from the 60s. I'm just really into like utilitarian wear, like stuff that like work wear, utility wear, stuff like built to last, stuff with pockets, stuff that's like heavy duty. I do want to show these. All right, so one is, it's like an Atlantic Nationals, but the car was just too cool on the back. These two aren't up yet. I think these I'm going to finally post, hopefully by the time this video goes up. And here's like an 80s. I don't know. This one, I think I might hold on to because this one might be like legit from the studios. This is why sometimes I don't list stuff right away because I need to do research on things a little bit more, but because basically I've seen this tag on 80s like Disney stuff, you know what I'm talking about, but yeah, there's like a similar tag that they put onto the 80s stuff. I wish I had something right here. Oh, actually I do. One sec. Basically, it looks like this tag. Like basically this, there's this tag and then there's like the Mickey and limited tag, but like this style I feel like is from the eighties, maybe early nineties. Some of, some of the pieces that tag, but slightly different build and it's stitched. So, I mean, yeah, basically I just wanted to do more research on this long story short, separate room. I just wanted to show that this is like the plain version of the one that I have on, but yeah. I'm trying to do more, I guess, like archival type of stuff on my shop moving forward. So that's why I feel like it's a good like starting point for me to do some of my collection because I feel like as the YouTube progresses, I feel like you'll see how my curation style changes throughout this year because it's something I've kind of been like working up to in the past couple of months. But yeah, I'll explain that like a little bit more as the videos go on. Okay. So here's like some fuzzy things I'm bringing this weekend. Here's like a little sage green Patagonia. And then here is an LL Bean from Freeport, Maine, made in USA. Those are going to Silver Lake. This brown puffer is gonna go to Silver Lake. This baby fat jacket, like this little lace up detail baby fat jacket. Or no, it's, it's BB, not, you know. I, I'm sorry, I literally had like like so many baby fat jackets this this uh, winter. Yeah, a starter jacket. I just thought it was nice, a clean, nice staple. It says Zeke on the front, little M patch. Davis on the back. All right, I think I'm gonna end it with like my two favorite jackets that I just picked up recently. This one is a personal, just because I love the green color. This thing is so warm. She's cute heavy duty. I also like, I put it down pocket like that, where it's like, it looks like you have a pocket from the top side down. And then you also can put your hands in the side to keep them warm. Like, so I think that's cool. I could put my phone in this pocket and then keep my hands in the side, side version to keep them warm. It's like one of those goose down insulated. Okay, this is, okay, I was kind of lazy with the trials because I just wore one shirt underneath. I like this one because of the sleeves. I just think the sleeves are so cool. Honestly, now that I'm seeing it on, like it looks way better on than it does on a hanger. So I definitely need to model this for Instagram or Shopify and Depop because I feel like it will sell better. Yeah, I guess if she doesn't go this week, maybe I'll keep it. So I guess that's what this weekend will be. It's like, um, we'll see what's meant to be. We'll see what's staying in the closet and what's not. I think I'm definitely going to try to document that whole process. I guess. Let me see. Let me see what else we got. Two more pieces that I want to show. This one's giving me 80s. I'm not 100% sure. So what's really cool about this, the sleeves zip off. So not only is it a jacket, it can also zip it off and then it's a vest. And that's also really cute. We're about those two for one deals out here. We appreciate two for one deals. And then here's one that I picked up from a rag house that I wanted to make a project and I have still yet to do it. But at this point, I'll probably just do this and it'll be a long running thing. But it's like this really dope scaled leather jacket. 
which is why I wanted it. I'm like, I haven't seen anything like this um, and I'm willing to do the work on it. She is damaged. I honestly don't care because I feel like she's so patchworked. Patching it up more will be fine. I just need to reinforce her in like certain parts, but I think she'll be really cool. Maybe I'll fix her up and she'll get a moment at Coachella this year. Um, so yeah, that pretty much wraps up my jacket collection. Start on the Silver Lake vlog. It'll be more informational. I'm going to try to break everything down. So if there's anything that you want to know more about with flea markets, um, make sure to leave a comment below. My Instagram shop is nostalgic.threads and nostalgic threads is spelled with a Z. Um, you can check me out on Depop. My Depop is nostalgic underscore threads and a lot of the pieces that are on here. If this stuff doesn't all sell at Silver Lake, then it will also still be up on my Depop. I also sell on Etsy a little bit, but yeah, basically my main thing is Depop and my website. So yeah, make sure to check those out. Thanks for watching. Let me know what collection video you want to see next because I think I kind of want to do a similar video of this and make it a series and I can do that like once or twice a month depending on like what kind of vlogs I have coming out. Yeah, I hope this was fun. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.